everyone! This is a video tutorial on how to use an enantiomer of a compound to figure out its configuration. Now this is a process that I find people sometimes have trouble with because you kind of have to think forwards and then think backwards and switch your answer. So it can feel confusing, so let's work through a problem together. So over here we've got this compound. We know that we have an asymmetric center because this carbon is sp3 hybridized with four different groups attached to it. So remember, the very first thing you always have to do is to rank the groups based on priority. Some people say priority is based on atomic number, some say molecular weight. I go with atomic number, whatever your professor says, go with it. So over here what we're going to do is rank our priority. So we know that this would be ranked priority 1, priority 2, priority 3, and priority 4. The next thing that you have to ensure is that that fourth position is placed on the hatched wedge, which is this location in here. Now if it is not placed in that position, you need to get it there. There are two ways you can do it. One way is if you can three-dimensionally picture it, you want to rotate it in space. Alternatively, you can use the enantiomer method. What that method entails is you're going to swap group 4 with whatever is on the hatched wedge position. So in this case here, group 2 happens to be on the hatched wedge position, so I'm going to swap these two out. So what that means is I'm going to have my carbon still, the methyl group stays, and the chloride stays. But now on this wedge, I'm going to put my ethyl group, and on the hatched position here, I'm going to put my H. So if we take a look at the priorities that we have, we still have group 1, now group 2 is over here, group 3 never moved, and group 4 is exactly where we need it to be. Now, the most important thing for you to understand is that if you switch two groups, you create the enantiomer. So this here is the enantiomer of the original compound. So swapping two groups leads to the enantiomer. So whatever configuration we figure out for this guy, the opposite configuration will be what the first compound was. So now that we have group 4 on that hatched wedge position, we can then do the final step. Draw an arrow going from 1 to 2, and then 2 to 3. So we're moving in a clockwise direction, which means that this compound here has an R configuration. Then, if the enantiomer is an R configuration, we know that the original compound that we were looking at had to be an S. So that's how you can use an enantiomer to figure out what the configuration is of an original compound.